Now that we've got the notches cut, we can lay out and fabricate the pin keeper. The stock in the cut sheet is oversized so that you can make a keeper on each end of it and then cut it off after you've got them ready to go. And uh, this drawing is, uh, we're going to be doing some work on this drawing to kind of make it clearer, but I think uh, when we laid it out and drew it, we were showing the pin keeper from the outside. So this mortise is actually on the back side of the stock as you see it here. I think what we'll do is we'll flip it over and we'll draw it as if you were laying it out from the inside of the part. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to film the whole thing from overhead so you can see exactly how the part gets laid out. We'll go step by step that way. The first pin keeper I'm going to lay out is going to be on the right side of the head as I'm looking at it when I'm sitting on the horse. So it'll go here. And I'm going to do the layout from the inside of the part. So I'm going to basically pick the face that I don't want to see once I've got it set up, and I'm going to lay it out on that face. So here we go. I began by drawing a center line down the inside face of the part. And I did that simply by setting my square to one inch and then running a line from either side. And this part could be a little wide, it could be a little narrow, I maybe didn't account for the thickness of the pencil, but by having those two lines, one from each face, this little light spot in the middle I know is dead center on this part, and that's good enough for what we need. The next thing we need is a center point that we can use to swing the outer arc, and also uh, use to measure the distance for the center of this hole that we're going to drill. So I'm going to start out with a little bit more than an inch. The distance from the tip of the arc to the center point is exactly an inch, but I like to have a little bit of extra material out on the end so that when I go to my bandsaw to cut this arc, I don't have to worry about the blade running out of the material. So we're going to make this mark on both ends because we're making, we're laying out two at a time. All right. So now we have this point. We're going to measure back 15, 30 seconds, which is just, just under a half an inch. I'm gonna take the blade out for that. I'm gonna use the dividers to mark the center point there so that when I go to drill, the bit will find center easily. All right, so we found this point here. I'm going to go ahead and use my dividers. I'm going to set them to an inch and I'm going to swing the arc for the end. All right, they're good to go. And this is just a guide for the bandsaw. It doesn't have to be a perfect arc. I usually will rough cut this at the saw and then I will take a, sm a spoke shave and smooth the saw marks off with that. And whatever shape I'm left with at the end is what I leave. You're just wanting to remove material here so that when you clamp down on your parts, you don't end up clamping with the pin keeper. You want the pin to be the thing that sticks out farthest past, past the pin keeper. So that's basically the complete layout for the left side. All we have to do now is drill a hole right here. But on this end, we still have to lay out the mortise for the pin keeper to rotate in, or the, uh, the, the limiting pin to rotate inside of. That is where this drawing gets a little tricky. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out, this is the, the hole here. And then we're going to, we've got our, we've got our center line up. We need to uh, lay out a line that's 30 degrees off of this center point. And like I said before, we're looking through the part at this layout. So when we flip it over, we have to make a mirror image. And I think by the time this video comes out, we will have changed this drawing to account for that. So if this drawing looks a little different when you get your plans, that's the reason why. So we've gone 30 degrees at an angle here, and we're starting from the center point, 
and we're making our mirror image. Now we need to come over an eighth of an inch outside the mortise on either line. And this is just to allow for the thickness of the pin, the limiting pin. And we need to come up 5 eighths from the outer edge of the circle on either side. And we'll do that after we drill the hole. So I'm going to run over to the drill press. I'm going to drill a 9 16 inch hole in each side. And we'll come back and X finish laying out and excavating this mortise. Okay, we're back from the drill press. Now that we have the location of the outer edge of this 9 16 hole, we can measure 5 8 along our offsets. And now we have our mortise laid out. And this mortise is going to be a quarter inch deep. This is probably one of the few times when you need a chisel smaller than half an inch. I'll use a quarter inch chisel here. The only really important thing to remember is when you're excavating this waste, you want to chop against the grain, across the grain first, and then come back and wedge or pair across the grain. If you drive a chisel in along the length of the grain, especially with something like ash or oak, you're likely to just rive it in half and then you'll have to start over with a new blank. And I'm not trying to go the full depth all at once moving around on me, so I'm going to go ahead and set it over here and clamp it to the bench. So now before I get all the way to the end, to this back shoulder, I'm going to go ahead and put the bevel side down and remove some of this waste. Hey everybody, it's Mark here. While I'm fitting this piece of joinery together, I wanted to let you know that if you're looking to build your very own shave horse, I've got kits for sale over at jointeffort.net. The kit comes with a full set of plans, an adjuster, and all the nuts, bolts, and screws you need to put a shave horse together. All you have to do is add your material. Just take a look at the link down in the description. I'm gonna go ahead and set my square to the depth I want so I can check for that as I go. And I got about a sixteenth left. And if you go a little, you want to miss by going a little bit deep, I think, if you're going to miss. Uh, this is really just a clearance opening. Okay, so I'm, de I'm deep enough here. Before I clean up all these edges, I want to go ahead and excavate this side. Now here, I've got to make a stop cut because if I start chopping across the grain, it's going to want to tear out or break out along the grain line. So I had to go through here and sever that grain. Not real deep. <clears throat> and now I can turn the chisel across the grain and start making my chops. Okay, now that we've got all that waste out of the way, we can start working our way back to the layout. Just double check our depth, make sure we're deep enough all the way around. So now we've got our mirror image layout. And 
I can go over to the bandsaw and cut this curve, or I can go ahead and fit it to the head, which is probably what I'll do first. I'm going to uh, start by start the mounting process with the right side of the head. So as I'm looking at the head, we're going to work on this side. I'm going to make sure that my the hole that I drilled for the limiting pin is on that right side. And I'm going to clamp it in my leg vise here. And the really important thing is to make sure that when you clamp it to get this thing adjusted, that it's touching on the 45 degree angle face and the horizontal face. So I'm going to put it here in the vise and then I'll reposition the camera so that you can get a good look at what's going on. I also want to make sure that the shoulder of the pin is below this surface. We don't want it to interfere here. Okay, we've got this clamped in the vise. The shadows may be uh, playing tricks on your eyes because there is a chamfer along this outer edge, but the pin is touching both of these faces, this one here and this one here. So we've got our pin keeper stock and we're going to basically turn it over and set it down. Okay, now I can see right now I'm going to have to make some adjustments. Let me slide this up so it's a little bit closer to flush. Okay. So we want this to sit so that it's centered in this opening. When we take pressure off the clamping head, we want this pin to fall down and be loose. But we don't want the pressure to be on the pin keeper when you're clamping. We want the pressure to be up here. So we center the part in the opening. Now what I'm seeing here is I've got to move this chamfer this direction by about a sixteenth, which is what this gap tells me. The other option would be to make the diameter of the pin smaller, but that's a little bit harder to control at this point. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip the whole thing over and we're going to check the other side to see if this gap is about the same on both sides. Again, you want to make sure that it's in contact all the way down from one end to the other. Otherwise, you could have it skewed and it could give you a bad reading. So, I want to make sure we're working with the correct side. I'm going to center the pin in the opening. And yeah, it's looking to be about the same. So what I'm going to do is mark a small amount of material here on both sides. so that I can keep track of how far I've gone. So it's gonna be less than a sixteenth. We'll sneak up on this. Typically, I cut this material on uh, the table saw and I've got the pin keeper stock ready to go. And what that does is it allows me to check it and then shave a little more, check it, shave a little more, uh, and I can really sneak up on the fit that way. Okay, so I'm gonna basically remove that much material with my block rabbit plane or a shoulder plane. Before I start, this will end up being my exit. So I'll take a chisel and I'll pair and leave the line. Okay, that'll protect me from blowing it out. bit closer. We'll check the fit again. That side's pretty close. All right. So that looked pretty good. Uh, this one is dead center. 
So what I can do now is grab a pencil with a pretty fine point lead in it. And I'm gonna mark where I wanna cut this to length. Okay. Flip the whole thing over. Get it as close to centered as we can. So when we shave material off this, it's gonna slide. We want it to just slide back this way. Um, and it looks a little exaggerated on the screen here. We'll have to do a little bit of material removal on this side of this part to bring it back. Go ahead and mark that. Okay, so these are our two pin keepers. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the right side off. I'm gonna cut just outside this line and we'll get it installed on the head. So that way we can just drop the pin in and then it'll make it easier to go back and forth checking the, uh, checking the layout on this one when we're fitting it. Okay, so I just left a little bit of material. I left the pencil line. I bit into it a little bit with the saw there, but that's basically the pencil line. What I want to do is be able to plane it flush in place. So we'll go back over here, make sure we're looking at the correct side, get our pin lined up. Okay, I don't have it tight at the bottom, so the alignment's out. It has to be touching these two faces from top to bottom when you're setting it up. Otherwise, everything will be out of whack. Okay. Okay, that's more like it. So what I wanna do is lay out a line across here that will allow a pair of screws to fall right in the middle of this opening. And that can be done by eye, maybe like just past 3 8 of an inch. Yep, transfer it on here. And then I think I'm gonna come in 5 eighths of an inch from each edge. So I'll use, I'm gonna leave that set up for the other side. I'll grab a different square this time. Well, 5 eighths seems like too much, let's do a half inch. Yeah, that's better. All right. I'm gonna get this set to the correct height. I'm gonna put a clamp and cover up this hole, but I'll be able to drill this one. Now right here, you want to make sure you get this thing exactly where you want it because once you drill this pilot hole, the screw is going to take it. Make a pin prick here. All right, the kit comes with four number eight by one and a quarter screws. All right, now we can use the first screw as a clamp to hold it tight while we put the second one in. side. So you can see now why it's important to have this curve be smaller than the radius or behind the radius of the clamping pin because if I wanted to clamp here and my part was wide it would hit this material. So I think before I go any further I'm going to pop this thing off and I'm going to go and cut it to shape on the bandsaw so that way I can clamp this part into the vise without this piece interfering with it. And I'll go ahead and take the other one as well. Okay. 
Now that we've got the curves cut and we've got the saw marks all smoothed off, we want to be able to put this part back on. We're going to have to put it on and take it off a few times in the build. So we want to make sure that each time we do that, we aren't cross-threading. We want to get back into the same uh, threads that we cut the very first time. So it's just like doing a, you know, doing it with a machine screw. You you want to run this, put the put the screw in the opening, and turn it backwards until you feel it click. There it goes. And now I can actually put the screw in with my fingers. And once it's started in the right threads here, I know it's going to be the right threads there because the parts were close together. They were clamped together when I put the screw in there. So it just runs from one right into the other. And put the other one on. On this next step, I'm going to be shaving this edge of the pin keeper on the left hand side in order to get this pin centered in the hole. And to do that, I need to be able to go back and forth to the leg vise and the setup. So what I've done is clamp the head to the face of the bench and then clamp the pin in place. And that frees up my hands to make adjustments and go back and forth without having to reclamp it and set it up every time. So once we put this part here, we can get a look and see how much material we have to take off. Okay, let's see how this fits. We've got it tight here, and it looks like we've got a little bit of material to remove to bring this edge back. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. And it looks like we're still in a good setup for our line here, so we'll cut this off. Go ahead and mark my line for my screws. I said a half inch last time in from either space. Okay, now we can go back to a more solid setup. All right, we've got our pin mounted and it's looking pretty good. We still have a few things left to do. And the first one is to make the limiting pin and glue it in place.